as you look back and, and think about the, the first couple of weeks of school, what stands out and um, what do you think needs to happen going forward? You know, the biggest thing that stands out is in Central Florida, in our public schools, we have not, we don't have a um, universal mask mandate or we don't have universal masking. And that's a big no-no in my opinion in the uh, medical world uh, per the CDC, per the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, this is something that was in place the prior school year. And now we're at a worse place than we were before. And we don't have that mask mandate. So that is very, very concerning from a pediatric perspective, from a mother with a child um, who's going to school. You know, before I kept my kids home and um, luckily my son is at Trinity Prep and they have they have a universal masking. So I'm happy with that. But my four-year-old is starting and because she's in a preschool class, it is optional. Mm -hmm. And so she and only a couple of other kids uh, will be wearing masks. So that's a little concerning for me. You know, it's it, you hear from a lot of these parents at these school board meetings, and they're saying that how can my, you know, kindergartner, elementary school age child be required to wear a mask, you know, and keep up with that throughout the day? I, I know it's different for each and every kid, um, but do you are you in the belief of that something is better than nothing? Absolutely. What we know that works is multiple layers of protection. And masking is probably one of the most important ones that has been shown to reduce the spread of this virus, keeping my germs to me, keeping them from you, and then just overall reducing the spread of the virus in the community. So it is, it's proven. There's no arguing that, although people are arguing, arguing it. <laughs> um, and so to and up, it's possible. My child has, my daughter has been masking since she was three. And if you, model it for your children, if you work on it at home, if you do it when you go out, they get along. Kids are doing really well with masking. I see it in all age groups, even in pediatric practice. So it can be done. Now, are there times that they may take it off or do something wrong or not wear it properly? Yes, but that's what the adults are in the room for so they can make those adjustments and give them gentle reminders. You know, children five to 14 now make up the largest group of new cases in Orange County. It, troubling to hear that, I know, first and foremost. Um, and that you, you have to, I don't know, looking back, and if you were to forecast, if you were to forecast out three weeks, is would that be surprising with school back in session? <sighs> I hoped that it would have been better than this, um, but it is not surprising, like I said, going into school without a mask mandate. Um, again, those layers of protection, masking, ventilation, robust testing, quarantining, hand hygiene, social distancing, uh, uh, working with the local health departments, all those immunizations for those who are eligible, all those things need to be in place. So if one area is weak, the others can kind of take over. Mm -hmm. Nothing is 100%, but these are the things that have been sh been proven to work and no school should be operating without all of them in place. You mentioned how much worse the Delta variant is than the original COVID virus um, when it comes to contagious levels and things like that. And that is really, you, you see it when it, can you explain this? When it gets into a place and someone has it, how quickly it spreads from person to person and uh, what that can do. I mean, we've seen entire grades being having to quarantine because someone comes in and tests positive. Yes, that's exactly what happens. We know with this Delta variant, there was alpha and I forget the other one. I would assume B is next beta. I don't know. <laughs> I can't keep up. Right. But this is probably the third or fourth variant, as we know. And then we see this lambda is looming, right? And so this variant, the original alpha variant is said one person with um, the virus could have infected one or two other individuals. Mm -hmm. Well, this variant, Delta variant, is much more infectious in that it can infect up to five individuals, mm -hmm. that individual with that virus. Mm -hmm. And so it is more easily spread. And yes, we are seeing the results of that. As you mentioned, even in our practice, our patient numbers are so low because every day we have a full schedule 
I kid you not, every day families are calling and saying, can we still come in? We're on quarantine. Mm. No, you can't come in. That's what quarantine like, is. Yeah. So mm. people can't come to their health visits because they're on quarantine. Mm. We have whole families that are infected with COVID. Um, and, 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 and these kids have been in school. Now, I don't know if they got it from school or they brought it into school, but it is all associated because the school is part of the community. Yeah. Um, what, when it comes to vaccinations and, and we're seeing them, the good news is we are seeing them go up a little bit as, as people see the stats. And I think that's um, the bottom line is when you look at the hospitalizations, it is overwhelmingly unvaccinated people who do not handle the virus well. When it comes to, to children, I know that you know Pfizer, they can get 12 and up can get the vaccine. What's the word? Uh, what's the latest, I guess, when it comes to lowering that age and, and getting that uh, authorization from from the FDA? Yeah, it's in the works. So 11 and below that is in the works. It could be coming down the pipeline, um, maybe in that five to 11 range by the end of the year. Um, younger children than that, probably not till next year. Now full FDA approval. I know that's in the works now as well for 12 to 16 with the Pfizer because we know 16 and up is has now has full FDA approval. So all of that is in the works. Um, and I I agree with you. I think some people have been waiting for this full FDA approval to feel like it truly has been tested and it's now approved. So I think that's going to bump up our vaccination rates. Also, again, people seeing how bad our hospitals are being affected themselves, needing to go to the hospital for one thing, but you can't get the care that you need because it's full of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and just seeing the sheer volume of how their lives are uh, impacted with their kids coming in and out of school. I think people are getting it now that, hey, I've got to do my part. It's just, that's the bottom line. You've got to do your part or we're all going to sink together in this. Yeah. Um, you know, the, can we elaborate more on the full approval and, and what that truly means? I think that we get lost in, you know, the jargon, people see headlines, they see whatever they want to see online, but what full approval means when it comes to a, a vaccine and, and why someone can be 100% confident in getting it now? You know, I I think an, an infectious disease uh, expert or one of our health officials might be better to answer that. Um, my understanding is that there is a process to be FDA approved. And when you're in an emergency situation like a pandemic, there is emergency use authorization. Um, not that anything that's important is skipped, not that you're a guinea pig, it's just things can be expedited in a quicker measure, but the full approval has to take that normal process that they will not circumvent. And so that's what finally has been done and it has gotten that approval. But a lot of experts, committees, uh, steps and rigor um, of people checking and double checking to make sure it's safe and effective and does what it says it's gonna do. And we'll have more with Dr. Jones coming up, including a discussion to clear up some of the confusion surrounding the vaccine and infertility. Stay with us. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. As cases of the coronavirus continue to climb, overall hospitalizations in Florida appear to be holding steady. Another bit of good news, more people are getting vaccinated, just not enough, according to health experts. Orlando pediatrician Candace Jones is back with us now to clear up some of the lingering confusion regarding the vaccine. When, when parents come in and they either have questions about their, their child going back to school, wearing a mask, or when it comes to vaccinations, uh, what's your messaging to them? Let's start with, with if their child is eligible to get vaccinated. Um, what what is your what is your normal messaging? You know, I'm just really sitting down with my family and seeing how they're doing. Um, outside of the normal things we do in pediatrics, we do all of that. And then I just sit down and say, you know, how are you guys doing with the pandemic? You know, have you been affected? You know, we have to now treat COVID like a fourth or fifth, fifth vital sign. Have you had it? And have do you have you had the vaccine? So that's two of the big things we ask. Have you been exposed? Have you had COVID? It, plus or minus. And 
have you gotten the vaccine, you know, as far as the parents and the children that are el eligible. And that normally guides my conversation because I'll know right away if they're for it or against it, if they have concerns. Um, and then we can, I let them guide that conversation as to answering their questions and their concerns. But I'm absolutely encouraging vaccination for everyone who's eligible. I'm talking to them about how to stay, stay safe at school, um, reminding the kids of wearing their masks properly when indoors, uh, washing their hands, and, and reminding parents to talk to their teachers in the school about keeping their kids safe. You know, it seems like there's three groups here. It's for vaccination, hesitant about getting vaccinated, and then just not going to do it. Right. I know that family, some families, have people who are in one camp, another camp, all three camps. If someone, what is that conversation like? If someone is vehemently against getting the vaccine versus someone who is for getting the vaccine and they live in the same household, I mean, what's your, what, what would be the best way to approach that and, and getting that family member the information and ultimately get them vaccinated? Honestly, when you find out, tell me because I'm having the same problem. <laughs> Not in my household. I was I was fortunate. My husband's a physician, and so we got the the vaccine. My son, who's 12, couldn't wait to get it. Um, we believe vaccines are safe and, and they're effective and they work. So in our household, but it took me um, talking to my parents, to 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 my dad, multiple family members who respected me as a doctor and trusted me, I, and it was. Just just a very easy conversation of why I thought it was important and why I felt like this is where we are, this huge global health crisis, and here are the risks and here are the benefits of this vaccine and weighing the two. It's not a perfect situation. It's not 100%, give me the vaccine. It, it is some risk benefit and some thinking and making good decision making through this process. Once I did that with them, it was fine. But then I do have siblings, uh, family members, who are adamantly against it to the point of believing lots of disinformation. Um, you know, it's the mark of the beast. It's all kind of crazy stuff. It affects fertility. It, you know, God hadn't told me to take it. All kind of foolishness that you can't even really rebuttal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that conversation is just not worth having because it can um, get out of control and ruin relationships um, and just cause a lot of strain. So you can just sit the information there or give them some credible sources and say, I'm here. I've done my part. If something happens to you, I, I know I've done my part. Yeah. Um, and here's the information. If you need me, if you have questions, please ask. Yeah, it's, I know a lot of families are, are going through a difficult time when it comes to that. Um, they don't want to rip their family dynamic apart, but, you know, you can only do so much. So uh, you, you brought up uh, infertility and the concerns there. I know that is a concern. The research and the, and the data and the science behind that, though, does not back up the concerns, correct? Can you explain that? That is true. There's just no evidence. There's just no evidence um, that that shows fertility. And what I will say, the evidence that we do have is thousands and thousands and thousands of women have taken this vaccine and, and gotten pregnant and had babies mm -hmm. and taken the vaccine while they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and now their babies, we have studies to show that the babies now are showing some antibody production and some immunity um, from receiving that vaccine. Um, so I, my um, belief is on the side of science that we have enough proof that shows women are getting pregnant with, with the vaccine. They are carrying their pregnancies through term and their babies are healthy. Um, and so there's just no evidence to show the other side of that. I imagine that you do all you can to, to make sure that the baby is going to be safe and that you are going to be safe when yeah. birth occurs. And so this is the best way to do it. Right. The worry is understandable. It really is. This whole situation is very worrisome and teasing through it all can be very complex. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. I just want people to make sure they're talking to their trusted doctor, that they have credible information 
action. And then I know you will make the right decision that weighs the risk and the benefits to get the vaccine, to wear your mask, to be safe. Mm -hmm. Following health officials, infectious disease experts, the AAP, the CDC, everyone, the science, mm -hmm. instead of a YouTube video, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, just doesn't make sense to me. No. Um, now we are getting into, uh, just like we talked about, I believe last year, we are getting into a time where the flu becomes more prevalent. And um, we've heard from doctors and uh, experts saying that, please get your flu shot. And it seems like that will match up uh, when it comes to boosters as well. For a lot of people, not everyone will be eligible to get a booster yet eight months after being fully vaccinated. But um, that's another uh, <laughs> issue all in itself. We've seen schools shut down because of the flu. And so we don't know what kind of flu season this is going to be. But you are recommending, I imagine, all of your patients and the parents um, to get their flu shot as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We want your children to get all their childhood immunizations. That's why when we see kids not being able to come into their well child checks because they're on quarantine or people not coming into their essential health visits because of this pandemic, it is concerning because we risk having outbreaks of other preventable infectious diseases like measles, like flu, things of that nature. So yes, still do everything that's recommended that we've always recommended, but now on top of that, I know we're asking a lot, <laughs> get your flu vaccine and your COVID vaccine if you're eligible. Uh, as you look back over the last 18 months, and it's hard to wrap your head around that, but uh, what's been uh, the biggest challenge so far, do you think, for you as a doctor? You know, it's just been really the misinformation. Never before have I felt that things were so divided. You know, there was a time before this pandemic, for the most part, that what I recommended to my patients, they believed, they trusted. Um, very few people who, you know, not vaccinating. We have been seeing that trend growing, um, but now it's exploded. Um, and so for me, it's really tough to all of a sudden now feel like your patients are side eyeing you <laughs> when you tell them things and that now we're the enemy and we're just, you know, part of big pharma or pushing some agenda or with the government. Um, it's just really tough, um, you know, being feeling that way that our our patients are seeing us is that way when we're truly just here to keep you healthy and safe and make sure you live a long healthy life and again starting tomorrow masks will be mandatory in orange county schools without the option to opt out for more information on the new rule and for a list of vaccine locations in central florida just head to clickorlando.com i'm justin mormuth hope you have a great sunday